Second to last match of week four, Full Sail Armada going up against number 20th, Florida Gulf Coast University. My name is McCormill. With me is Cruzin. Jesse, this is one of those matches that we looked to at the very beginning of the season saying this could very well be playing out for potential seeding overall inside of the Southeast Division D. And that's exactly what we're looking for here. Yeah, it really is. I mean, when you look at this full division, Full Sail currently leads the division in terms of record, but they've played more overall games than FGCU and Barry Codd, so they're only really the team with well, that that's kind of played for more matches than what you've had. So once everybody catches up, it's going to be more even between these top three teams. But yeah, you're absolutely not wrong. This really kind of feels like a match for top two, though, in all, in all honesty, because yep. I feel like Barry Codd is going to be a very, very tough team to beat come later on this season. Yeah, absolutely. And Barry Codd's that one roster in inside of this division that everybody's kind of looking to as the mainstay number one overall spot, besides maybe Florida Gulf Coast University. And that doesn't take anything away from Full Sail and what the Armada have done so far this season. But overall, they've already had a series where they played up against Barry Codd. They lost at 03. Florida Gulf Coast has really yet to hit their hard part of their schedule. That's kind of where they're headed after this match against Full Sail. And this is kind of the biggest first test of the year that the Thunderbirds are going to be able to have under their belt. Yeah, and I mean, I love that point that you bring up with FGCU because with them coming in as the number 20 ranked team, Full Sail, they, they come into this match and they've got a lot to play for in this division because this is such a tough division like we were kind of hitting to. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if Full Sail wins this, maybe you start to see them maybe cracking into the top 25, really start to kind of raise some eyebrows there, but it's still always going to be hurt with, like you said, that loss to Barry. So, I mean, you'd love to see it. It's just, it's going to be a very, very tough situation for them to be able to do so. Yeah, when we talk about that loss to Barry Codd for Full Sail, it was 200-point clubs that they had against them, and then a 2-6 to six s and loss overall. We'll take a look at the head-to-head -head now. See Full Sail 7-1 overall on the season, 9-2 and in hard point, with a 6-1 and one search and destroy record. Again, the losses that they've had this season only coming to Barry. So, again, it's not like the end of the world to where you've, you've already lost a, a few key moments. It's only one series, and you're still playing for top three, but you look to the opposite side for FGCU, undefeated completely across the board not just an overall record but of course map count as well they'll look to keep undefeated not only inside of this series but going forward into again their hardest portion of the year and again jesse earlier today already they beat ucf yeah, and it was a 3-0, hot 3-0 over UCF. And you know what? There was another team that came in today, 4-1. and one. They were looking, they were trying to make a case to be in that top three. And really, towards the end of this, I mean, whoever loses this match realistically will be kind of in a, in a fight with FCU to be able to get have their chance to be coming in towards that top three because that's really what you're aiming for at this point of the season you just want to be top three so you can make it towards that and when you're looking at this head to head i think the big thing that really stands out for me here is that seven and zero in hard point for yeah. this F fgcu roster and the crazy thing about that seven zero is yes they haven't played the toughest opponents yet but still the fact that they've only allowed an average of 40 seconds allowed in hard point this season is just an absolutely ridiculous stat yeah, well, we see the head-to-head -head here. More importantly, though, basically two brand-new rosters coming into this season overall. Let's go ahead and take a look at our Full Sail Armada roster coming into this best-of-five series. You got Phoenix, Lavelle, Mystical, and Meathead. This is a roster, again, where you have a lot of very, very high ups, but a lot of very low lows. And if you can kind of mitigate that, find a nice little niche place in the middle and really start to grow from there on out, that's how you take not only this series against Florida Gulf Coast University, but start expanding into the later parts of the season. Absolutely. And I mean, like, kind of like we were talking about when they lost in that match against Barry, everybody in this team struggled during that series. So to, you need to see everybody kind of step up today going up against another top team in FGCU because honestly, you just can't really afford another big loss to another top team at this stage of the mm -hmm. year because the more losses that you have, the more that you're going to continue to fall down and down and down. And you're aiming for that top three right now. And then another big thing with Full Sail and with this roster, it's not, it's just not the same Full Sail roster that we're used to seeing, Corn. Like, we're used to yep. seeing a roster that last year finish top 16 at champs a full brand new roster coming into this season they need to start to step it up here stepping it up is going to be the biggest thing but overall next we'll go ahead and find ourselves in looking towards the thunderbird florida gulf coast university roster and this roster we talked about before we came into the match actually it's kirchie the captain for this team that really has made a mainstay mark on this roster and has been a huge realistically almost, almost revitalized effort as a captain that has rejuvenated not only these young players but has taught them so much not only about call of duty but what it takes to be a winner and it, it, this roster just on paper was nice but you would go all the way back to what we saw at the end of cold war in terms of the ccl mutineers open and then even into the vanguard launch where fgcu was a top dog every single time and kirchie like you said he's been a huge 
part to this team and kind of just revitalizing this entire program for Florida Gulf Coast. But I think a player I'm really looking at is Justin. Justin has been the main slayer on this team as well throughout the entire season for this team. And I mean, you got to think that he's taken a lot of learning from Kirchie and the way that he's been able to kind of mold Justin to being a great gun skill player and then kind of bringing him and teaching him the ropes in terms of being very good at the game and just like kind of learning how to play competitive, if you will. But you know what? He's done a great job of just leading the way in terms of slaying for this roster almost every single map that I've seen so far. Little Gulf Coast University, a very vibey squad so. overall. That's kind of the biggest thing, at least looking at this roster, is that over the course of the year, I've gotten to talk to a few of the players, and one thing that they always have behind them is the ability, availability to not really take a loss too hard, and when they're winning, they're on cloud nine as an entire unit. They're always laughing, they're always having a good time, and that's what you'll look for in a best-of-five series against a very strong and talented Full Sail Armada roster. Either way, we take a look at our map set. Bakaj, Bakaj, maps one and two, the hard point and the search and destroy back to back. We'll then go to Tuscan for map three. And if we do need to go to four and five, obviously we'll go to a Gavutu and a Tuscan end things off. But just talking about Bakaj specifically, what do you want to see out of the side of full sail in order to take this map one? I just want to see pure chaos. And I think that's exactly what we're going to see going to Bakaj. I actually like this map pick a lot from full sail in terms of you don't really want to play like a, a map against Florida Golf where Florida Golf has, they, they, with the fact of how good they are at hard point, and let me rephrase this, they have just kind of become a, a very good systematic hard point team. So uh, to go to a map like Bakaj, I think it's your best chance of actually being able to take a hard point off of the team like Florida Golf Coast, because you get that extra level of chaos, you get to come into this match and kind of just fight for every little bit of thing. And th this is where you can really just go gun skill to gun skill, fight to fight, and really try to take a map off this team. Is the victory overall in the series. Hard point, going to be tough to take off of FGC. You, you heard Jesse say that, but really, you just don't want to allow Justin, the mainstay slayer on Florida Gulf Coast, to get hot and going off early. The same thing can be said about Kirch as well. You don't want to allow this team to allow their duo to really start to flourish around yourself. And every single time that you allow that to happen, not only are you going to be able to I guess feel that pressure on the map, but more importantly, you could be looking at deficits at least in hard point of, of 40 to 60 points after one specific hard point. Because if you're not able to break early and often, Florida Gulf Coast will make you suffer. They will have at least a bit of, at least, I guess I want to say repercussions in more than general sense than anything else because they're just that good. And again, you, you mentioned at the top of the broadcast, yeah, they're number 20th for a reason, but this is the first time that we're really going to allow themselves to prove that they should be a top 25 team, and it's not just the weaker opponents that have gotten them into this point. Yeah, it's, it is absolutely their first, like, kind of big, big test here for this Florida Golf team, but... You know what? I absolutely think that they're going to be able to come to this test. I think we're still going to see them come out here and play in that same dominant form that we've seen them looking mm. at all season long. It just kind of comes down to if they can pop off when the time matters on stream. On uh, you, you know, they, they might come in a little bit nervous. You never know. It, it, it is the first time. You know these players a lot better than I do, though. So I think I'm going to throw yeah. this question to you for Florida. I know you normally you're the one asking me questions, but what do they <laughs> need to do to take this series here? I mean, realistically, again, this goes back to the point we made beforehand about how good Florida Gulf Coast can be in the hard point. You just need to break full sail like you did Barry, or like rather Barry did to full sail earlier on in the year. 100 points club them right out of the gate. That's already going to be the most obvious standpoint instead of the series to take that one OE going into a search and destroy. But allow Justin to get around the map, especially in map number one, have a field day on Bakaj. This is a great map. You get tons of kills. Allow Absolutely. your Slayer to start feeling themselves throughout the rest of the series. Then get into that Bakaj S and in map two and it's that same chaotic s d that we're used to on bakaj makes it so much easier for everybody and everything to get clicking get cooperative but more importantly even getting to a 2-0 series lead so florida golf coast to be fighting from the left portion of the mini map take a look at full still we're gonna be fighting from the right to be white and orange arrows throughout the entirety of the game here and we're to open things up for the first one we'll find two and we'll pair for three yeah, very good break off here. They they get right inside of the first hill, and you can see Justin's playing in the kind of the contest spot right behind that fence there. You can just sit there and kind of hold on to any time without really being in too much of trouble. Fortunately, he challenges out. He does get dropped off the bat, but I mean, you're already seeing a good amount of time here. Well, not even a good amount of time towards them, but they're doing a great job of not allowing full sail to get any time for themselves here. But finally, full sail looks like they're going to make a hit through the middle of the map, and they'll be able to reinforce inside the hill. Kurt was on three in a row, got cut down. Lavelle now, though to be the one who's finding the streaks on the side of full sail. Pushing up the map, we'll find the first depth of the game, so nobody really in a position to find streaks right now. Both teams have done a great job of keeping the other team off of the 
of the middle of the hard point, not equating to much time. You see player number one in feature already out rotated to P2. It's going to be a break, though, straight up the top portion of the map from Full Sail that allows them to break on in and retake in from the barn, though, as Kurtz will find the first blood on another retake attempt. The kills do come through, though, for Full Sail off the rip here. So, I mean, they, oh, no, nah, losing that gunfight is going to completely lose them spawns. I thought if they could win that last one there, maybe they could black the. the uh... They could block the the back portion of spawns towards tin there, but it's not going to be the case. Florida Gulf Coast, they will be able to kind of hold on to those, stop this team from being able to get anything. But, I mean, so far I'm liking what I'm seeing from Full Sail. They're putting a lot of pressure on the map. They're not really allowing Florida Gulf Coast to get comfortable inside, and that's what you wanted to see out of Florida Gulf, yep. is you want to be able to see them get comfortable on the map early on here. But Full Sail is doing a really good job of, of mitigating that. At the same time, you could also say Florida Gulf Coast, you, you know, the kills that they're getting aren't necessarily equating to much hill time, at least early on here. Will that be a factor as we go in toward the later portion of the map? We absolutely don't have that much of an idea, but with five seconds left, you see the rotations come in, and once again, Florida Gulf Coast are going to be the team that are there first. Full Sail was able to break nice and clean last time through over at P2. They did that by thriving in chaos this time. No, it's going to be a hit directly through the front door. Mystical doesn't realize there's a player from behind. Tippin will get the kill there, and you can see player number three and Kirch in the middle of the map trying to make a thing play, they, or almost able to make that pinch happen but it's just it comes down the staircase it'll be the last person here for fgcu but they're gonna get some nice hill time and constellation kill as well i mean let's be honest here corn if you keep rotating early eventually it's going to pay off you're going to be able to hold on to one of these uh, one, one of these hills for a significant amount of time and i think we're starting to see that here you can see the spawn out from full sale it's going to be spawning on that right hand side and honestly it's exactly where water golf want them to be spawning because you can just set everybody up and pick these players off spawn as they're coming off and you can see full sale they're actually trying to make the the wrap through the river side of the map so they can try to settle for this barn hill but florida golf has them completely trapped the thunderbirds doing a great job off the rip here first two hills on one and two really did not oh, that's huge. find much time for either full sail or florida golf coast after that fact though we're now in a position where florida Golf Coast has not only gotten a ton of time over on P3, but now have once again found rotations that are outplaying the side of Full Sail in its entirety. Five in a row here from Justin. You look back to the spawn side and to your point earlier on, it was a fantastic spawn trap that the Thunderbirds had on the Armada. And now it equates to even more hill time as they've been able to get across the map. Contest in, Kurt will look back. Beautiful game shot helps one up top around for number two in Meathead. And now once again, off the respawn, it's Full Sail. We're gonna have to make another team break wait for the push to come through because the reinforcements aren't there just yet. Oh, well, we know Kirchy and uh, Kir Kirch has just decided that, hey, you know what? I'm on mainstream today. I'm going to be absolutely popping off here for the stream. 18 and 8 to start this game off. He's playing very, very well. And his, same with Tippin. I mean, his submachine gun duo at 14 and 8. They've just started off mm -hmm. very, very well here in this game. You do get a three-man wipe coming in from full sale so this should allude to a little bit of time here towards the scrap time but what this does perfectly for full, uh, for florida golf is now they can say hey you know what screw this we've got a big enough fleet we don't even need to contest this back in 15 seconds here let's just push all the way across set up for this river hill but actually two wins on the right from mystical and meathead this is going to lead to early time going to the way of full sale I kind of like that break too into the barn because it allows you to play through the middle of the map and then get some north portion of the map control but if you look to the flank lavelle starting to make the play we'll find the first off-screen engagement against beaser that will at least try for the time being. Of course, this one's a little bit closer for Full Sail Armada, basically parallel right now. The FPC have done a great job of being able to sit themselves down right in front of the hill, claim tons of hill time. They're almost at a 100-point lead here on Bakaj early on. And Jesse, you know better than anybody else, a large deficit like this on a map like Bakaj can spell devastation than just the first set of rotation. Yeah, we're, we're not seeing exactly what I was hoping to see from this full sail team. I was hoping to see them being chaotic, being able to get into these hills. But the issue is, and it's the same issue that I thought we were going to see on more of a systematic hard point map like Tuscan, like Berlin, is that we're just not seeing them set up and being able to win those rotations to the new hills. And I mean, when you have Tippin doing things like that on the screen, winning two pieces and being able to get the remaining scrap time here, I mean, how can you come back? I mean, props to full sail. At least they've gotten out of that 40 point mark. So they're a little bit better than most of the other teams that we've seen go up against FGCU at this point of the year. But it, I mean, it's still just some ridiculous stat line coming in right now at this point of the game. 25 and 12 for Josh Kirchner. Let's find yet another kill here, three in a row. You turn around, look to find the last one. <laughs> challenge around the corner, smart to back off there. This first of the hot hand is going to make you pay if you challenge at the wrong time. Justin from above clears up the top force of the middle map. Oh, that's just disgusting. It's movement like that and the ability to play fast that's going to not only net kills, but of course hill time as well. And as you see Kirch go ahead, hop in towards it. You'll try to push out the spawns yet again, but you've already set yourself on the left portion of the mini map. You can just go ahead and get a few more kills again. It's a large lead early on here for Florida Gulf Coast. They haven't turned back once just yet. The Thunderbirds are screaming here on map one. It wasn't until hill number three in the last set of rotations where we really started to see Florida Gulf Coast start to really get a big lead off the start of the game. 
But I mean, once they found a good setup there, that's when you really start to see this team start to really run away with things here. Tippin <laughs> finds his fifth in a row, now finds a glide bomb. Oh, I thought he was about to get six right there, right off the bat, does miss a few shots. But I mean, still, just the fact that you're pushing this team this far out, going towards this new hill, is just going to make it that much harder for them to be able to rotate towards the new hill. Lavelle does have a streak. He chooses to invest in here. And they actually have follow players to follow this up. But the only unfortunate part is you've got Tippin in the back left here. So these players on Florida Golf, they should spawn up on him. Big off screen engagement, gonna go in the way of Meathead. Clears out the back spawn. Kurt's gonna try to push out once again on another three spree. Around the corner, two forward point. Glide bomb gonna be used over the top. Should be able to find maybe a bit of information, but it's also gonna net a kill. So back and forth, pinstripe kill feed will allow Justin and Tippin to stay alive in towards the barn. Maybe one more stab at this in terms of a push. You wanna break onto the point, but this is all full sale. Time is needed. Especially they want to even try to find their way back into a game because last time it was Florida Golf Coast who held down all of P3 in its entirety. Didn't look back once. At least you have a streak to work with now if you are the Armada. I mean, that was a really good hold for the most part from full sale. But unfortunately for them, Florida Golf get their remaining bit of the scrap time there. So it's going to completely just kind of elude any bit of time that you got from full sale in that moment. And it just leaves us still in a 100-point lead here for Florida Golf Coast heading towards the hill where they got a full 60 the last time through. B, sir. Hasn't that a monumental game? Double negative right now. But although that shows that on the scoreboard, it does not equate to what we see in terms of the overall score between both of these two teams. Beaster from the front going to be able to find one. It's very hard for a main AR like Beaster to find their way around a map like Bacaz, especially since they're just out rotating early. So just because you don't see necessarily the flame come in doesn't mean that Beaster hasn't been doing a great job getting out early for the team of Florida Gulf Coast University. Through the front, once again, the three five in a row. You can just hold this in the back corner, wait for the brakes to come in. You've got Justin who's pairing. Another MP40 inside as well. Beautiful plays here from Florida Gulf Coast. They hold it down. Tippin will find two. It's just trades upon trades for Florida Gulf Coast and a white kill feed that lights up. They're only about 25 away from taking map one. And if you're full sale, you can't even give this time up. You're in a situation in this game now where you're down, what, 130 seconds? And you really, maybe 160 seconds, actually. You can't give up any bit of time here. You need to get as much of it as you can and rotate towards each of the next hills. And I mean, I know it's very kind of... Uh, kind of meta to say right now, but you need to play perfect COD from this point on, and we're just not seeing it out of them right now. Tippin from the back, Lavelle will challenge two in a row now, once again tries to make a little snap on the meathead work, but Beaster will be there for an immediate trade. So have gotten in for now. Right now, though, really the only thing that you're trying to do is make sure that you don't get 100 point club here by the side of Florida Gulf Coach University. It's very reminiscent of what we saw when Barry Esports and Barry Cod played against this FL Armada roster. And Jesse, yeah, they're holding this down. All Florida Golf Coast is going to need a 16 clean second break now in. And they should be able to go ahead and win all the time to get these kills and push out the point. What scares me here is like, even if they do get inside of this and they contest this point of time, you still need to go back to Hill 1. You've got so many streaks on the side of full. So, oh, Florida Golf. Justin, for the middle, you look over towards the right side. The last couple of kills come through. A map number one victory for FGCU. They made that one look easy. The Armada, you've got some work to do still. And one of the key points that we brought up, Jesse, was after that Barry Cod series that Full Sail lost earlier on in the season, what we needed out of them was show improvements inside of Hardpoint. Unfortunately, against FGCU, maybe they're better than Barry Cod. We haven't seen them play yet, but overall, it didn't look like things changed all that much. We'll talk about statistics in just a moment, but you saw from that little glimpse there, Captain Kirch, he had himself a map number one. Yeah, he absolutely did. Very, very strong map out of Kirchy and... I mean, it's kind of what we were expecting, to be completely candid with you. Yeah. I mean, when you look at this Florida Gulf Coast team and the way that they've been playing hardpoint, I mean, the fact that Full Sail University was able to come out here and get 95 seconds on them, I think is a pretty good amount of time just for the simple fact of how good Florida Gulf Coast is. We set in our keys to victory, and we know that that getting hardpoint is going to be almost impossible to take off this sure. FGCU roster. Your main focus right now is to be winning the S&Ds and to be winning the controls because control is one of those newer modes right now still into this game where, you know what, maybe you have a chance to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this lane on this roster. Outside yep. of that, though, I think it's going to be an extremely tough series to be able to take any maps off this team. Yeah, look, and, and you know, I kind of sat there and, and was talking beforehand, and I didn't want to necessarily say it at the very beginning of the broadcast because I wanted the full sale to be able to prove me wrong, at least in map number one. But this could absolutely be an, a 3 0 game here for Florida Gulf Coast. I, I truly do think that the toughest competition for FGCU will be Barry Cod later on in the year, but that doesn't mean full sale or mono isn't going to be able to give them a chance. Problem is, though, you look at the statistics just in the base form here 9 and 30 down for Phoenix, nobody really going positive on the side. 
inside the full sale except for Lavelle. But then on the flip side, Jesse, it's a tale of two different stories. And for Florida Gulf Coast, they're the winners, so they get to write the history books in this scenario. Yeah, I think the thing that really stands out to me is if you add any two players up on Florida Gulf Coast, like Justin and Kirch, Justin and Tippin, Kirch and Tippin, you add any of those two players up, and they have more combined non-traded kills than every single player combined on Full Sail Armada. Wow. I think that is just that just goes to show you just how good Florida Gulf, not only rotated in that game, but just laid out so strong in that game. Even like you said, Beaser, he didn't have the strongest game for himself, but he didn't have to. All he yep. was worried about was rotating over to the New Hills, getting it locked down, and he did a damn great job of doing that inside of that first map 250 to 9 or 250 to 95 if you are just joining us we'll take a look at our map set one time before we go ahead and find ourselves back on Bacage for a search and destroy but overall all we can really say about that map one performance from the side of the thunderbirds was that it was nothing short of domination and they'll look to continue that back on the same map for s and d jesse one of the things that Florida Gulf Coast University had in their favor going into this is that if they did take map number one, the only if, uh, the only search and destroy round that they've lost so far was a single round against UCF, which was a six to one victory for them. Uh, what kind of picture does that paint overall for the side of full sale going into this match? Uh, I mean, it keeps you scared, really on your toes as well, just for the fact of how good this Florida Gulf Coast team has looked in every single mode. But, you know, I think this is a good mode for Full Sail. You kind of just get a chance to slow things down. They've been very good in this mode all throughout this season as well. They're 5-1, and one, only lost it to Barry Cod as well, just like how they did with the hard points. I think when you go into this one, though, I think you just need to slow things down. Play for a pick off the start of these rounds, and then really just try to take that pick. Use your man advantage. Play to your full effect. You just can't let players like Justin and Kirchie in this map be popping two pieces on your team. If somebody gets a kill, you need to be trading immediately. Trading immediate name of the game. Offensive push over towards the A site up through the middle of the map, at least predominantly. Actually going to rotate this all the way over towards the B site for now. Want to get aggressive here if you are the offensive team. Nothing is really way up the map yet for the side of Full Sail, and that's exactly what I wanted to see here. A nice passive play. Maybe net yourselves a pick. Then you can start making your way back over towards the bomb, but look who's getting aggressive up in the middle map. It's going to be Captain Kirch. He does have a lot of players in and around him, though, so if he finds one, he should get traded out pretty quickly. Lavelle actually will open things up with that sniper down in that river, so it's going to open up a possibility of a flank now here for Mystical Goat. Ooh. Justin makes quick work of Meathead inside of the A site. We'll bomb works his way back over towards A. Mystical from behind is going to be able to find one. Great inch flank that comes through. Justin will go ahead and find another technical trade, though. So two in the round for Mr. Justin. Lavelle will wrap out towards the back. Actually sees Justin there. Only has a sniper, though, to go ahead and challenge back around the corner. Oh, oh. <laughs> it was close to coming through, but now it's Mystical left in a one versus two. Bomb still working its way over towards B. How will they have to play it? I think he's just trying to play for information right now. He spots Justin out in the back. So this just gives them the the go okay to know that, hey, they're probably not hitting at me yet. Let me just kind of play in and around this site. Bomb will go down, so it's going to have to be a 1v2 retake here for Mystical. And they played that so well. You saw every every moment Mystical was kind of second-guessing where they wanted to play through, simply oh, because Florida such bad timing. didn't know oh. exactly where that was. Through the wall, headshot on Kerchi. So now okay. it's a one versus one. Two and two, or sorry, two and oh versus two and oh. Justin, Mystical. Around the corner, Mystical actually sees Justin there, but Justin can just sprint away. You've got to make sure you can get out with your life. 18 seconds left. You can play this nicely, and you're going to cook an aid directly over the top. It's going to be able to get information, or is it? You've got to be able to get back over towards the site. 11 seconds. You're going to be able to spot a little leg around the corner. Oh, oh that got way too close for oh. my liking, but Justin will clutch it up there at the end. First round on the board to the offensive side after it was basically ringing around the rosy and hot potato between A and B. Those are the breaks that you're going to need if you're full Sarabata and you want to be able to take this game. You need to make sure you're tucking in behind there so you can get that kill or so you can get that bomb defuse if you're going to go for it in that situation. He had no information, didn't know you were on the bomb there. If you took just a little bit more, he would not have even been able to see your legs there in that spot. Great, great, like kind of being able to see that though for Justin, mm -hmm. but just very, very unfortunate there because that was 100% a very winnable round for a full sale armada. But a first blood from Kirch, second, make that three in a row through the middle of the map to open this round out. And now Lavelle, he's just sitting in the back wondering, where's my team? Give Kirchie the ace. Absolutely insane round. 
through the middle of the map. I, I mean, look, I, I've called him Captain Kirchie beforehand, but I mean, right there, he commandeers the map absolutely perfectly. You get the first three because they just wanted to sprint straight up through the middle of the map. And then all Kirchie does is say, okay, him. well, you want to sprint through the middle of the map? I'll sprint through the middle of the map too. I mean, he would have to. He was just sitting in behind the door. He did not <laughs> even care. I saw the stuns come in. I saw him in behind the door. And I, I mean, usually that's a moment where I'm going to give that mic to my play-by-play -play caster, let him take it. I'm sitting there and I'm like, there's no way they just run out of here, right? Like, just like leaving him in the middle. And he just guns all three of them. Like, what can, what, what can we do in that situation? Oh, uh, you'd hope and pray. That's what Full Sail needed to do. You take Tippin off the board. Kirchie will go ahead and escape through the door. Oh my. With 2, two HP to his name. If stuns... <laughs> get nerfed in terms of the damage output it would have been an unfortunate situation there kirch will get around the corner though mystical should be able to find kirch and will from behind a streak availability off the board and what was two quick rounds for florida gulf coast turns into a nice little round win there on the defensive side for full sail so first blood this time will pay off of course the aggression in towards the middle of the map gives them a nice little talking point at least for the next round I like that they're not backing down, though, from that middle map play. Like, even in that last round when they get, you know, all three gunned down by Kirchie in the middle of the map, you see, you still have to like the fact that they're taking that challenge. They're going towards it. They're not just giving up and kind of kind of folding an armadillo to this mm -hmm. Florida Gulf Coast team because that's exactly what you want to see. You want to see them taking the challenges, taking the fight to this team like they're any other team. That's how you'll win games, not by playing scared. Mystical on three in a row. Making your way over towards this A site, and Meathead will be the furthest one pushed up the map, at least right now. Mystical and the rest of the squad want to get into this A site. Meathead realizes it's cleared on out, so we'll hop on in through the window. I'm going to go down. Justin, around the corner, doesn't realize there's one directly on that double door. You could go ahead and maybe pop a few shots through it, break it open. And one out right there. I think he might have. Tries to preempt the corner, isn't able to find anything just yet. 35 seconds here for a retake. It's going to be the first person in. He does get one. Instant trades come through, though, and it's actually just going to leave Lavelle all by himself here. Bomb is already being defused as well. This is a really, really tough spot. If Lavelle can find one and get him off the bomb, he might be able to close this round out, but he's not going to check the bomb in time. Justin will get the defuse through. Oh, and that's so unfortunate, too, because with that first kill around the corner, if you were to just bust directly into the site, and maybe a slide him. around him, but no. It's Kurtz who plays the long angle from behind. Justin gets a little lucky because Kurtz wasn't necessarily looking over the top throughout the entirety it, of that gunfight. But yeah, I, I think so. I, I think he would have had it before he gets that challenge. If he maybe bust right through that wall inside the site right away, maybe he finds it, but he just wasn't able to get it there in time. And Kurtz, yeah, I mean, after a very good map one, I mean, he knows he's on mainstream right now, right? Because he is just playing he has to. <laughs> absolutely like, he, like he's ready to go here. And I mean, we'll get to see this long range engagement again with Beaser taking on Lavelle in the back here, but nothing really too much coming from it. They're just going to try to make this bomb up through the middle of the map one more time. And Justin trying to cook a nade, Gordon Ramsay style. And he does find one there on a meathead. So nice. You dink it off the top portion of the window. You get it directly down onto it. No time to run away, no time to escape. You slide back into it, you find your demise. Three versus two now, bomb making its way over towards the A site. Nobody there all just yet. Two players from Full Sail going to have to go ahead and break their way all, back, all the way back over in a, another attempt for a retake here. 45 seconds left. It's a tough retake, too, because you're in a two versus three. We've seen them in man disadvantages before, trying to retake in 1v2s. And it just doesn't work. But Phoenix will find the first kill here. It opens up a lot of potential. But you got to know that there's a player on FGCU who's playing in towards the back of that barn. You need to get that player out first. A lot easier of a retake now with the people. <laughs> okay, well, it was two players versus two. And then all of a sudden, the one-on-one -on -one engagements for both players go in the way of Florida Gulf Coast University. So I think Kurt's got like both. It... Oh, actually, no, Kurt just does get both. <laughs> because guess what? They line up for him yet again in the middle of the map. Hey, guess who? Kirchner, who finds the double. But, I mean, overall, uh, th this has been really a clinical search-and-destroy effort here from the Thunderbirds, Jesse. Yeah, uh, and, I mean, Corn, at, at what point do you stop chowing middle of the map when you know Kirch is alive still? <laughs> that, that's the real question right now, because Kirch is just... It is his middle of the map. It's not going to be Main Street anymore. It's going to be Kirch's street, and you just need to stay off of it because he's just going to gun you down, especially if you line up like that. And, once again, you can see him already here, set up towards middle of the map, getting ready if there is any little bit of a push. But it looks like a much slower push coming from full sale. They don't want to just give anything away this time. <laughs> Stack all three bodies to the middle of the map. And they'll get actually a lot of information here. That kind of mid-street is completely open for them. And I would be very surprised if we don't see this bomb start to get wrapped over towards the A site. Ooh. Nice little slide challenge out from Meathead. You'll find one. I was going to say, adjustment definitely being made here. 
even if it just means not sprinting straight through the double door in the middle of the map. Tries to go for a trade. Beaster, though, will get found by the hands of Meathead. MP40 will find the kill. Justin, we've talked a lot about you thus far. How good you've been for FGCU. And you clutch a one versus three to put it to match point. Around the corner, you'll be able to find shots onto the first one, but won't walk away with a kill. Full sail, a much needed round there. Keeps basically everything that they had alive here inside of the s and I mean, what have I been saying the whole time? What did I say when we came into this one? We need them to play a slow search and destroy, find the first blood, play as a team, and guess what? It's going to elude to round wins. Who would have thought? It absolutely does there in that round. They play a nice slow first round. They don't run and push three players through double doors through the middle of the map. They find a first opening. They play together. They find the round win after getting the bomb down. Great round out of full. So I would love to see them kind of build off that round, realizing that that's what it's going to take here in this game to be able to come out and be able to take this map off of the likes of Florida Golf. But what can you really do when you've got all of the Florida Golf players running into the bottom of, of grandma's like this? Oh, guess what? Another aggressive push here into the A site. Justin, though, will lead the charge this time, and the cavalry has found their way all the way in towards the middle of the building. Up top, Mystical Goat will be there. Be wanting to push up the staircase just yet. 25 seconds ticked off the clock. About a minute left to play here in round number seven. Easter will jump off. You get early information if you are full still. You know this has to be an A commit. You're already over there. But as Kirch finds the first kill of the round, no figure, no shot, no surprises as he gets another one there. Two quick first bloods here for the side of Florida Gulf Coast. And it comes to the hands of Josh Kirchner. Phoenix needs to find one here. He's in a great spot. He does get one. So it's going to leave us in a three versus two. Now Kirch will get this bomb down as well. So Phoenix on three in a row. I think he might want to just kind of play back here in this two versus three, try to get some information. But Beaster gets the information for himself. He finds one. Can't get the second, so we're still in a one versus two here. Lavelle still has his life to play. Only six HP, though. And you're running directly into Kirch. I don't know if Kirch actually spots that out there. Looks to the back of the middle of the map, reads the rotation oh so perfectly. Just going to wait for Lavelle to slide around the corner. 11 kills in the search and destroy for Kirch. Five to two up now. Jesse. Nice. I think that just shows you exactly how good Kirch has been in this map. Like, the trigger discipline not to shoot at him while he's bottom river there running across just to know, like, hey, I know exactly what this player is going to do in this situation. I can see him there. Me and you were sitting there because we obviously don't have it from his POV at that time. And we're just like, oh, you, I th you said the exact same thing I thought. I was like, did he see him there? I, maybe he got him behind Kirch. But no, Kirch turns around, literally watches the exact angle. He thought that he was going to come through. He obviously saw him down at the bottom of the river there. Beautiful round win out of him to close that out. And now, once again, you've got full sail, or sorry, Florida Golf on another map win potential here with only being lost two rounds going into this round. That nade over the top won't find anything except a little bit of information for full sail. Justin will find two immediately tipping after the fact. Lavelle, once again, in the one be odd. You see tipping around the corner. You try to go for the kill, but Florida Golf Coast comes swarming back to your spawn. What a game, what an S&D, but more importantly, how good do Florida Gulf Coast University look against this Full Sail Armada roster? Oh boy, this is looking like a 3-0 more and more every round, every second, every minute of the series. Well, something me and you talked about, and I mean, I don't really, like, we, we can kind of sit here and we can harp on the fact that Kirch went 11-3, and three, Justin went 8-3. and three. It's things we were kind of expecting, though, going into that map, let's be honest here. After mm -hmm. seeing that map number one, and talking about how these two are the main slayers on this team, we were kind of expecting them to pop off like that. Kirch played fantastic throughout that whole game, though. I think one thing, though, that we were talking about before this, though, was how do we think that Florida Gulf Coast will match up when they go up against Barry later on in the season? And I was saying, hey, I think that Barry can absolutely take the fight to this Florida Golf team. But now I'm seeing this, and after seeing how that Florida Golf or that, how that Full Sail and Barry match went, and how Florida Golf has kind of just taken it to Full Sail at the moment, that really leaves me worried for Barry. That might be a lot closer of a match than I thought it was. Well, it looks almost identical to the match Full Sail had against Barry because there were maps where, you know, if you are Full Sail, you got 100 point club by Barry, albeit beginning of the year. So you didn't have all the time in the world to be able to find some of the adjustments you wanted to make week over week and how you wanted to move forward after some of those matches. Uh, but, but overall, uh, I mean, the search and destroy with, with the 6 to 2 win there, it's basically the exact same thing. We'll look at the statistics one more time. Kind of talked about them and threw them already, but seven non traded kills there on Kurt. I don't trust first bloods in terms of what it shows here, but he did have a multitude of first bloods. That can also be said about the rest of the Florida Gulf Coast roster. And although Tippins two and five and Beasters three and six, it doesn't take away from what Florida Gulf Coast did as a roster because those kills that they got weren't just those, you know, one-off kills that maybe came in a round lost. It was still kills that were important to going ahead and eventually winning rounds. Obviously, Kirch, though, was able to win a few rounds by himself, <laughs> namely the one where he had the ace just round three in the middle of the map. 
Yeah, that, that's an interesting point, that First Bloods. I'm looking at that right now, and I see 10 First Bloods on the side of Florida Gulf Coast. And I, I thought that how that stat worked was it just showed you the, fir the First Bloods for your team. But <laughs> there was only eight rounds in that game, so I don't know how we could have 10 First Bloods for our team there. So, you know what? Maybe we might need to get that fixed for Call of Duty. I don't, I, don't know. I don't know what's going on with that stat. But you know what? Uh, I think the big thing, that, and we pointed it out on map number one, and we can point it out again here, is just the seven non-traded kills on both Kirch and Justin alone. Yeah. I mean, like... Unreal numbers. Absolutely unreal. I, I, I got nothing else, Corn. I got nothing. Fun hard point. Fun search and destroy. One more game could see the end of the full sale armada. Hopes and dreams in this best of five. Florida Gulf Coast look oh so good here. The first two. We'll go to a control for map number three. We'll step aside here for a minute when we come back. The potential conclusion of this series and the rest of week four of the CCL. Well, the Thunderbirds have done a great job in this series of finding themselves seismic waves, not only in their own division, but putting full sail down bat. Map number one was not close. Map two, same thing. Jesse, talk to me about the series thus far, because, again, it has not been close, and Florida Gulf Coast are proving that they deserve that number 20 ranking that they have, if not even showing people that they should be climbing that rank even further. Well, you're not wrong. Uh, we can we just leave it at that. You can see the map scores there, 250-95, 6-2. You were not wrong. It was not very close to the first two maps. But I've got faith in this full sail team. I think that they can come out here, and they can still compete coming into this control on Tuscan. Now, is it going to be an easy map for them? Not by any means of the word. But it's still a newer mode. Yes, Florida Gulf Coast are now 3-0 and in control. But I think, full, I think full sail, I think they have a chance here. If you can kind of find a way to outslay this Florida golf team, which we haven't seen yet throughout the series, but if you can find a way to outslay them, secure that final defense here in this game, I think that's your best shot of being able to take a, uh, taking a win against this FGCU roster. Tuscan control a map that is a lot of fun to watch, but can be very difficult to go ahead and commandeer, specifically on the offensive side when you're pushing towards the B zone, trying to oh, get I'd it all crying. captured up. But Jesse, overall, <laughs> right now, again, we already have seen that Florida Gulf Coast University undefeated inside of control. It's looking at least to me overall in this division that the two front runners, at least from after what we've seen in maps one and two here, our Florida Gulf Coast University in Barry Cod. We'll look to that matchup a little bit later on. I believe that's going to be in week six of the CCL. So that's not going to be for another about week or week and a half, almost two weeks from now. But once that happens, I guarantee you it'll be one to watch. It's going to be one of the weeks where every team that's like at the top of their game seemingly is going to be playing against the top team. So uh, that, that's the one week I have just riding on my radar. But I mean, I love this player right out of the gates. Two ticks of progress already towards the B site. I was about to say the same thing. I really, really love this play from Full Sail Armada. I mean, throw caution to the wind, throw something different at your opponent. But unfortunately, it looks like Florida Golf have been able to stabilize on this B site. So Full Sail, they won't be able to finish off getting that full take through, but they will be able to send all three members back over towards a right off the rip here. And you can get a good spot now to try to complete this A tick. And then if you are able to finish this A tick off with a minute, you might have two minutes just to be able to have to go across the map and only get one take over at B. Set themselves up for a great chance of being able to win this first round on offense. You don't lose a lot of lives in that same process as well. So not only do you get a ton of great time, but you also find yourself now just at 24 to 23 overall. Two ticks of progress at A. You're about to be able to finish the entirety of the A zone. Add that extra minute. So you have two minutes and two seconds they to work stopped. with here. And now, of course, right at the very end, Full Sail get knocked out by Florida Gulf Coast University. And they knock them back down a peg. But get, Jesse, look at player number two all the way over towards B I trying to get that last tick. I saw it. I saw him. I saw him sneaking his way over there. I was just saying corn because like, come on, man. Why, why you got to curse them? like I'm that? Sorry. Another kill. Oh my God. Phoenix gets all three. He got all three on the B side. He should be able to finish this off. He's got Mystic coming over and helping him now as well. You got to Mystic hop on and just stack the point. Trying to watch over from the top. You're not able to get the last little bit of progress. Oh my God. Either, but you're at least able to secure A. Get yourselves an extra minute on the clock. But how close why was that both stack? at A and B? Got to ask the same question there. The stack should have absolutely came through. But Tippin will find a kill there onto Meathead. If you're FGCU right now, all you're trying to do is make sure Full Seal can't push up the map. Because you're trying to dwindle their lives down. While also making sure that Phoenix can't pull off another miracle back at the site. And that's exactly what he's trying to do once again. You're doing a really good job, though, of slaying right now if you're full sale and really keeping up with Florida Golf. I say that, and then you get four man white. But they still, you know what? They were doing a better job in this game keeping up with the slaying in terms of just how bad we saw them get out slayed in maps one and two throughout this game here. But this gives me a lot of hope for the rest of this control here for this full sale armada team. You just need to find a way to hit this as a four man unit, break in, get one tick of progress. All it's really going to take is one clean wipe. 
Dustin plays it perfectly around the corner, dives back and forth, but Mystical comes across the screen and is able to wipe the floor with Justin. Tippin will trade out that player. Two straight kills for Florida Gulf Coast. And Jesse, even with two minutes, a four life advantage, and a lot of pushes able to come out from the side of Full Sail, it just goes to show how difficult it can be to yeah. break over towards this B zone. It's so hard. I mean, at this point, too, Florida Gulf Coast with only having five lives left on the side of Full Sail Armada. Now all you really need to do is just play kind of team deathmatch, just finish them off, take out every single last player here. But I mean, same can be said here for Full Sail. You do have a player pushed up, so you should at least force a, a little bit of a weird spot. And I say that, but nope, a spawn does come in immediately to the same exact spot onto the back tank there. But you get a couple kills, three versus four, you still have a chance of taking this hill. You don't know Tippin's playing down in this little corner. You're waiting for your teammates to push in through the HQ, but player number three in Meathead just says, screw it, I'm gonna hop on the point and wait for everybody else to now have to push on back. Get another player at the top on the little plateau. Lavelle in a one versus three. It would have to be a one versus four. You get the first two. Now it's Kirchie and Beaser. The last two ones alive. You make this possibility happen. You only have seven seconds, so you gotta work these two kills. And of course, the zone at the same time, you go ahead, hop off of it. You actually spot Kirchie out from behind you, almost able to turn it back around, but you do two 360s. You get a little cute with it. Unfortunately, can't walk away with a round win, but that got a little too close for comfort. Full sail, unfortunately, won't be able to take round one. I think a big statement here, though, as well, in the fact that, you know, at full sail, they don't get that job done, but they only lose that round by two lives. You can see that happen by a lot more than that throughout a lot of these control rounds. So this is a big opportunity now for Full Sail to not only win a defensive round here against Florida Gulf Coast, but win this round with a strong life lead so you can carry that in towards the back half of this game and maybe, just maybe, get that final defense in terms of having more slain than the opposing team does. Over towards the A site, Justin Kirchy, who would have guessed it? Both those players running together on the A site, trying to get that first bit of progress. Phoenix will lay down all the way on the back, 42 HP. Regens all the way, hops up, but the double... Shots from both players on Florida Gulf Coast will come through. Clean that player up. You're halfway through that second bit of progress. Tippin is pushed all the way up into the spawn side of Full Sail. In the church, you'll fly out towards the back. Meathead just making sure nobody's going to get too, too aggressive. What in the what in the hell was that? Okay. That's camera angles for you, ladies and gentlemen. Either way. <laughs> oh, in, the, in the midst of all okay. that chaos, A does get completely finished here, and now we got to start making our way looking towards this B site. But we've seen it in that last little, little bit of that last round. We saw Full Sail. They got a very good start to the round. And they only needed one ticket. I mean, you need three here if you're Florida Golf Coast, and you got two minutes to do so. What it really takes to break this setup and to be able to get inside this hill is you need one big wipe, get all the players off, move your players up, and then get a second wipe and set up in the right positions so that you spawn out the, the defensive team. Nice little free cam there. Saw Phoenix be able to find one, hop around the corner for the second, but minute 45 left, 22 to 21 in terms of lives. Doesn't look like it'll be a glorified team death match to the end of this one. It's either going to have to be Florida Gulf Coast getting on the point, capturing B, or the set of Full Sailor Armada holding strong on a defensive opportunity. Up towards the top of the staircase, though, Meathead will slide in. An aggressive challenge on Beaser will fall and knock the side of Florida Gulf Coast down a peg. They'll have to go ahead, find reinforcements, wait to push up the map once more. But in the process, you can still dwindle some of the lives away from Full Sail, as we oh. saw Justin do there. Trade immediately by the Saiyans of Tippin. And now as Lavelle will have to back off, it's going to be yet another gunfight that goes into the hands of Lavelle. 13 and 8 here in the control. The first time we've oh. really been able to get excited about Full Sail. Do you see what Beaser just did? He saw all the players just come off spawn from Full Sail, did not shoot his gun. He made his way now into the back. He can call out here for his team. Now, there's two things that is going to happen here. Either one, he's going to be able to find these players in the back, push them out, or two, he's going to be in such a bad position here, and if they don't find these kills in the front for Florida oh. Golf, it's going to basically leave them all pinched out, and the spawn out comes in perfectly here. You've only got one player left in Lavelle here on the site. Lavelle played so sneaky, though. Laid down. Kirch around the corner, though. We'll find yet another kill. Three in a row for Kirchy. Doesn't realize the player is in from behind. But you still have Beaser, who's in the back spawns. And if you're full still, you have to read that Beaser is in the back spawn because you're still spawning on the north portion of the map. You finally read it, but then Beaser moves back around. If you're Lavelle, you go ahead, find an off-screen engagement there. But as oh, Tippin now pushes across into radio, you can now push up the map, find a kill around the corner, and make your way forward to try and influence spawns. It's still a big 2v2 fight, though, coming out in the back here. And Lavelle Mystic, they take both down. It's going to be only seven life snuff now for Florida Gulf Coast. Even more importantly, only eight seconds left on the clock to get this round over. So at some point here, Justin just needs to hop onto the site to stop this clock. Nobody's at the point, though. You got to realize that Meathead's going to be coming from the right side. You're going to be able to read the first kill. Aggressive oh my challenge God. in the back from Justin. You find a huge kill there. 
Phoenix now looks up, mystical from behind. Kirchi goes for a challenge once again. You're on the point. Contestant is there, back over towards the church. You gotta look. Halfway through progress over on the B zone. Only two lives left for the full sail armada. You've gotta push back. Two ticks of progress now on B. Lavelle from the back spawn. Player number four, Mystical, trying to find out from the church. Beaster will turn around, looks for the kills. Lavelle, Mystical, two kills. Justin goes big once again. And somehow, Florida Gulf Coast University get the B point, go up 2-0, and now we're on not only match, but series point. What in the throw? That, oh my god. That was absolutely a breakdown from Full Sail Armada there. <laughs> like, you need to just get, just, literally, you kill Justin, you win the game. You take three shots at it, and Justin wins all three gunfights to close that round out. Unreal stuff coming in from the man. We said he's the lead slayer here on this team, showing you why at the end of that round there, when he was able to close that out, Mystical and Meathead will find two off the start of this round. They will hop onto the A zone because you can see Florida Golf, they needed to, you know, put a little bit more respect over towards B off the start of this round. But this A zone at this point, I feel like it should be completed. Yeah, it's going to finish it off. So not even going to contest it if you're Florida Golf Coast and you're just going to play for to try to hold on to this site for a full two minutes. And I mean, we've seen them do it before. I'd be very surprised if we don't see them do it again here. I mean, four down there, three in a row from Beaster. But more importantly here, Jesse, the thing that I'm kind of looking for is if you are full sail, the win condition here is obviously getting the B zone, but making sure you get that to keep the control alive more than anything else. Beaster still on three in a row all the way in the back spawn. Justin's going to be able to come from oh, behind to wait. find one who was on the point. That actually might be the biggest kill there because it allows Josh to go ahead and find his way over on the plateau. When Meathead finding that kill in the back, he actually forces the spawn out towards top church here for Florida Golf. So now everybody, you have the exact setup that you need right now if you're full sail to win this round. Justin's trying to stay on four in a row. I'm sure you'd love to have a streak here, but you're going to have to win another offensive round here if you want to be Florida Golf Coast to take this three to one. So what was an absolute breakdown that led to a 2-0 lead for Florida Gulf Coast. Full Sail comes back, says, screw it. Instead of going directly over towards B, we're going to go A first, get an extra minute on the clock, and then absolutely slay you the hell out for the rest of the game. That was marvelous from Full Sail. That was probably the best offensive round I've seen in Cold War this far. Yeah, I mean, I absolutely agree with you. This has 100% been the best offensive round I've seen so far. And, I mean, you got to... If Florida Golf doesn't win that last the first two rounds with the way that they did, Full Sail realistically could have just 3 0 them here in this map. Kirchie over towards A. Two ticks of progress. Florida Golf Coast now trying to do the exact same thing Full Sail did in the last offensive round. Two minutes and 20 seconds left on the clock. Beaser, Tippin, go ahead and pair for two. Kirch through the middle of the map. Had a slow start to this game, but 17 and 20 now. Found his way back nearly positive. Mystic's going to be over in the HQ. Will Kirchie go ahead and check around the corner? The answer is yes, but Mystic will get the timing, get the shots. More importantly, walk away with that kill. Back in the middle of the map. You still have Justin, who was on five in a row. Now make it six. You got full streaks to use. Tries to go for number seven around the corner. It was aggressive. Backs off with a life and a streak still intact. Three in a row from Mystic on the opposition, though. The defensive side looking to hold strong at B. The air that we've seen come through from Florida Gulf Coast in the last round does not come through here for the same inside of Full Sail Armada here. And they, they will continue to hold on to these close swans because of that issue not coming through. What you saw Full Sail do in the last round was when they all came off spawn, they just pushed straight through B because everybody on Florida Gulf was on the top side of the map. They were able to get into those powerful positions. Not able to do the same thing here just yet. It's going to be a much harder job here for Florida Gulf to get into those same positions to be able to cap and get onto this B site. Making yourselves known, presence there. Six lives, the difference between both of these teams at the moment. In the church, Kirchy will hop out to find one, turns around, tried for the free aim, thought one was going to be following him, knew that there was a player there. Fortunately, though, Full Sail will walk away with that kill, finding the trade out immediately and going two for one there. Now make it a three for one. Meathead will find yet another kill. Two players on two streaks. Let's out a Full Sail up and towards the top. Phoenix will fall. Florida Golf Coast's push will once again subdue. It's big, though. For full sale because they're really starting to stabilize these lives down and i think they were down what what six lives at one point they did just bring it down to a two life differential back up to four now for themselves streaks will be invested here don't get too much value out of it except for you push them inside of the church and it would have followed them up with a few kills for your team here but you can see the full hit from florida golf they want to push this one through the back they need to get these players off the side glitch and they know that <sighs> playing time playing lives justin double positive with that kill 32 in 16 here on tuscan another one will fly into the church they're just funneling into the hands of Justin with an MP40 in hand, being able to absolutely mantle 
the entirety of the full sail armada 12 to 7 have to be another crazy round here from the florida gulf coast university thunderbirds and as justin will look around the right side corner they're playing ring around the rosie you spot the player over towards the right but lavelle a great play all the way in the back will hold strong long range kill with the ar mystical from behind tiffin tries to get onto the point eight to six two lives remaining five seconds though to get across the map and if you're player number five and beaster you won't be able to get there so right now an offensive wow. defensive round for Florida Gulf Coast in the first two rounds turns into an offense and a defense for Full Sail Armada. We'll see around number five. And the one thing I will say here is not only could the reverse suite start, but more importantly, Florida Gulf Coast University, your perfect record in control is now on the line. It absolutely is. But they get the defense. I'm not sure. I get, you got to think it's on Justin for having the 35 kills, which ends up finally subduing them having <laughs> this final defense here. But that's huge because now Florida Gulf Coast, as long as you just don't have a breakdown like what you had in round number three, you should be able to close this game out. Defense extremely easier to be able to win than, than looking at trying to take another offense here. We go back to the hit that didn't work for the side of Full Sail at the very beginning in the first round when they had the offensive push. Tipping from behind, we'll find Meathead and pair that with Justin. So... All of a sudden, first little break off for Full Sail looked good. Florida Gulf Coast now going to be wrapping back over towards A. First stick of progress at A, though. And Jesse, now I'm scared because they could actually execute on this A hit once again. That's exactly what they did the first round. Once they kind of got turtled over at the B site, you saw them hit towards A. They were able to complete it off of Beasters here. He's able to get one. Gets good shots in on the second, but the second tick of progress will come through. He's just going to sit on the hill now. Start contesting. You've got Kirch coming from the back. This is going to completely wipe that hit. And now Full Sail, they just say, hey, you know what? Screw it. Let's just hit towards B again. It forces the spawns, though. Lower back over towards B. Mystical finds Kirch. That takes away the pinch opportunity because you look into radio and Lavelle's found another kill there. So, tick of progress over at the B zone. Minute nine left in the round. Still a minute able to be added to the clock if you are full seal by capturing a zone. You'd love to have the B zone here, though. Streak going to be used over the top by Justin. Love this. It knocks him off and he gets two of them at the same oh, time. No. So, you go back over towards A. Kirch was able to hop him off the point beforehand. He does it again. Turns around, able to find the shots. Three more players now pushing from the full seal Armada roster back over towards a day but you've knocked the time down enough to where you got a minute left trying to pop back over towards Kirchie is going to be the next two players a team kill in there still 19 to 17 overall as Florida Gulf Coast they had a huge hold over at B see they've done this once before but the thing was the last time Full Sail was able to get the wrap over towards B is very similar to what we saw at the start of this round after they got the wipe on the A site everybody kind of just spawned up and towards the bottom you're seeing a very good spread here from the likes of Florida Gulf where everybody's kind of spread out in and around the map. It's not going to allow the, all the consistent spawns towards the bottom side of the map where everybody can just sneak and get their way through. And Kirchy was playing in a very, very annoying corner there. They knew where Lavelle was. Gave away is the position, though, as two players went for the cross. You can spawn up and look for these players, but you got to look to Kirch. He has to go massive here. Three players pushed all the way through the HQ. Beaster in the back. They're trying to stack the point here. They're trying to go ahead and make sure they can grab B. But as Beaster flies in, you find one. Everybody knocked off the board for full sail. And that was yet another huge hold because you wipe all four players down. The reinforcements have to go back to spawn once again. You've got two full reinforcements from full sail left with a minute and 13 to book up the map. The hit for full sail. This time through, they say, hey, let's hit through the top side of the map. Maybe we can make this hit through. But Justin, he is able to at least stop one, reads the push perfectly, and now you can get players on the flank coming in for Florida Golf. Tip in. Justin trying to work all the way back through the spawn. Justin's going to be there for the first couple of shots, but Phoenix makes a great play. Trigger discipline all the way in the back, but guess who's there? It's Tip in for a quick trade. Five lives remaining for Full Sail Armada. What looked so good in the last two rounds, seemingly falling apart in front of their eyes. 13 to 5. Now no respawns remaining from Full Sail. Florida Gulf Coast, they're trying to put this away in three maps. They're looking to come from behind. Kirchie goes big for one. Lavelle, Mystical, the last two players up and towards the site right now. You have one more player in Mystical trying to hit through the middle of the map. But will it be enough? You jump down. Beaser there. Shots from the back. Spawn's going to be close. Mystical Ooh. finds another one. But there's Justin. Now it's Kirch trying to put the last nail in the coffin. You get one. You get number two. Florida Gulf Coast almost surfer because that point was goddamn close to being oh captured by full sail. Oh, my God. Kirch just made the game-saving play. He slides in with, there had to have been, what, zero point, like, three seconds left on that for him to slide in and stop that with two people on the hill. He contests the time, wins both gunfights out and is able to close the game out there for the likes of full oh. for Florida Gulf Coast and I mean I I have absolutely oh. <laughs> we both got our hands on our heads oh. because like that was insane I did not think oh. when I said at the start of that I said that full sale had a chance to win that map and I mean I fully bet that but I didn't think that it was going to come down to being like that close of a map that was ridiculous realistically there Horn 
Well, still could have won all five rounds. They could have. They absolutely could have. But Jesse, like, if if it did, if, if at all, like, I just want to go back after the series is over, just kind of look at how close that that capture was on zone b because that was that was absolutely twisted i <laughs> like it, it, it took me to five. it took me to process all of the different types of things that were going around the map and then at the last second when kirchie hopped onto the point i i i i navigated my eyes to the top of the screen i said oh oh shoot oh they're about to capture b. oh they're about to capture b and then kirchie got on with like half a second left to spare maybe if that it, it was like one of those situations where someone's diffusing in search and destroy and you have no idea if they're gonna be able to get that last tick off or not what a game that was fun we'll look at statistics now overall for the series but i mean 44 kills for justin 32 from kurtz by the way i think kurtz was like i think like 12 negative in this map or something yeah like he that was at, one, at point. one point yeah he was definitely really really negative at one point so to see him bring it back like that and he, that last round really really helped him as well just like the way that he i think he went on a pretty decent streak in that final round for himself and he made a couple good flank plays. I loved the play when he sat inside the bottom of command center and just waited for everybody on full sail to push across him. He got all the information, was able to push him behind and find a couple of those kills. And that first four man wipe has really led to what helped them be able to close out and win that game out at the very end of it all. But like you said, an absolutely unreal map, probably one of my favorite controls that I've casted all season long. But I, I can't go watching this map without giving a little bit of criticism here to the Florida Gulf Coast side, because you sure. absolutely decimated them in map one and two clearly controls a weak point for this team right now even though they're 4-0 just watching that map and just seeing the fundamentals not being fully there you can tell that florida gulf coast they need to work on their control still well we'll take a look back through the series one more time 250 to 95 map one was not close we went into the the search and destroy in six to two which again was not close all of a sudden we get to a map three on tuscan and it looks like full sail is like one of the best teams ever when it comes to control <laughs> when it came down to like those last moment situations we had i think what was it we had we had the one round before golf coast went in all of a sudden with like a second left was able to capture the b zone and win their offense then they won a defense right after the fact then all of a sudden it was florida a full sail that was like oh we're gonna win this defense then they went a crazy offense they had to do it back to back twice and just couldn't make it happen but i mean jesse that was a fun series. I want to do that again. I, I mean, and we we get the chance to do it again, all over again. Because guess what, Corn? We're we're on for match number three on the night as well. It's going to be a Florida State University. So yeah, another Florida school for you, going up against University of Tennessee Chattanooga. It's going to be a great series. And not only is it going to be a great series, but Jesse, let's just talk about this real quick. That's going to be overall number 15 versus number 21 in terms of the top rankings. So same division uh, as per usual, but with number 15, Florida State, it was a bit of an easy yet struggleish series a week ago. Have they learned from that for the side of UT Chattanooga? They're trying to prove everybody wrong. They're trying to prove that they deserve not to be 21, but even further ahead, the Florida State. We'll find out which team will come out on top. We'll set this match up and everything else going forward. But we'll give you a time to breathe. We'll give ourselves time to breathe after what this series just it. provided us. We'll be back here with the rest of the action in the final match of the week here for CCL in just a moment.